Hey guys and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware and today we're going to be talking about the new old but still very relevant Ryzen 5 1600 and it's sort of quietly and almost silently getting a 12 nanometer release and it's still called a Ryzen 5 1600 and the Ryzen 5 2600 still exists and it's a little bit of a mess right now, but it's a good kind of mess because it still represents great value for consumers. So we're gonna talk about the new old Ryzen 5 1600. Now for this video, we're actually relying a little bit on Gamers Nexus because they did a great video, which I will link in the description down below that sort of covers some of the basics, also covers a lot of the testing of the Ryzen 5 1600, the new variant, which is called the AF variant because it comes after the AE variant, which was based on 14 nanometer, though the AF is now based on 12 nanometer. And that's actually a really big deal because it makes the $120 price tag of the Ryzen 5 2600 completely ridiculous ridiculous now and the, the Ryzen 5 2600 was a really good value but I can't recommend that anyone actually goes out and buys it right now because the new Ryzen 5 1600 based on 12 nanometer is basically a Ryzen 5 2600. In fact Gamers Nexus was able to get their 1600 based on that 12 nanometer process to 4.2 gigahertz which is right where the 2600 typically caps out. The new 1600 now does feature the Wraith Stealth Cooler instead of the Wraith Spire Cooler that it originally came with which the 2600 also comes with the Wraith Stealth Cooler not the Spire Cooler so the cooler is now identical the uh, clock speeds are nearly identical especially if you're willing to push it in the BIOS for the 1600 to get to that 4.1 4.2 gigahertz so the Ryzen 5 1600 is now a much better deal than the 2600 simply because the price tag of $85 is significantly cheaper than that price tag of $120 which used to be a really good deal for the Ryzen 5 2600 it's just that now no one should be buying that part because the 1600 gives almost identical performance and it's uh, you know shaving $35 off the price. And that price tag of roughly $85 depending on where you buy it is actually the reason that I'm about willing to call the current Ryzen 5 1600 based on 12 nanometer process that may be the best CPU deal we've ever seen brand new ever almost bar none because we are getting a 12 nanometer part we're getting six cores 12 threads $85 price tag and to sort of illustrate my feelings on the new 1600 because it was already a good deal with the 14 nanometer process at $100 and to illustrate how great of a deal this new 1600 is I put together a quick PC part picker list featuring that as my processor so $85 being dumped into the processor and for just over $500 right now you can squeeze in a GTX 1660 not a used one not just cutting corners or anything this is a $200 brand new 1660 and this is a card that is being put into a build that actually doesn't sacrifice a whole lot to get down to that nearly $500 price we're still featuring 8 gigabytes of DDR4 3000 megahertz RAM which yes that's a little light on the RAM side you can always add to it but the motherboard itself still features four dim slots it still features some heat sink cooling on top of those VRMs, so it's not going to be able to necessarily run a really high-end CPU like a 3900x or 3950x very well or at least not with any overclocking to speak of but it absolutely will be able to handle your eight core Ryzen 3000 series processor so it gives us a clear upgrade path to the future so there's really not much sacrificing on the motherboard front of things the case actually is a solid budget case that's the uh, deep cool matrix 30 case that I really like for a lot of my budget builds because it's about $35 again depending on where you get it and it features a tempered side glass window to show off a little bit of your hardware the power supply is a little bit of a sacrifice in this build I would actually recommend spending about an extra ten dollars to get something that's 80 plus bronze certified probably get a little bit more headroom with the wattage as well but an EVGA 400 watt power supply is a decent power supply to get up and running and will absolutely be good enough for this build you just may want to upgrade it if you're gonna you know go for upgrades down the road but for now this would fit this build just fine and the build once it would be completed would be a good looking build and a really really solid 1080p gaming rig for now and for the future that 1600 based on 12 nanometers is not going to be needing to be upgraded for a good little while now it could benefit from a Ryzen 3000 series CPU in the frame rate department but as far as a low to mid to maybe lower high end build 
this system would be a really great base unit with a lot of upgradability. And on the one hand, I really feel like AMD has missed an opportunity with this launch, and Gamers Nexus talked a lot about this as well. They could have just killed off the 1600 SKU altogether and rolled out, you know, the 2600 at a lower price and even made it an announcement, you know, the 2600 is not going to be featured at 90, 95, $100. Instead, they basically gave us a Ryzen 5 2600 at an incredibly low price. And I can't help but believe that this processor is going to, at least for the well-informed, cannibalize some of the lower end Ryzen 3000 parts, those APUs specifically where people will opt instead to go for a Ryzen 1600 on the 12 nanometer process and then if they really aren't planning on doing a lot of gaming with it they just need the CPU cores maybe drop in a really low-end GPU that they could find on the used market maybe buy one brand new whatever uh, getting a low-end display adapter is not going to be difficult for most people that are just wanting these CPU cores now the people that are wanting to game and we're looking at those APUs, they may have to invest a little bit more money in the package between the CPU and the GPU, but it gives them so much more horsepower on the CPU side of things. It's, in my mind, almost universally worth it if you have the space to upgrade from something like a 3200G build or a 3400G build to something like the Ryzen 5 6100 and then maybe like a GT 1030 or something like that to get you your GPU side of things. Now, I would talk about the Intel side of the equation, but frankly, I really don't think Intel's relevant at all in this very low end of the CPU market right now in really they weren't beforehand either but especially with this release now uh, the AM4 platform is just such a robust platform from top to bottom you have so many powerful options available and you also have such a great upgrade path that it really doesn't make sense at least in my mind to hop on to an Intel platform that gives you a very limited upgrade path knowing that as far as the process goes it's on 14 nanometer it's not going anywhere when, when they move down to 10 or 7 nanometer that platform is going to be completely different or at least it is highly highly likely the platform's completely different moving forward for Intel so if you're in that sort of market for a CPU that costs $200 or less I really don't see a reason why you would want to go anything Intel and for that matter if you're looking for a new desktop CPU above $200 I also don't see basically I don't see a reason to buy an Intel desktop platform right now so that's really it gamers nexus did give us that conclusion that yes in fact the Ryzen 5 1600 is definitely on 12 nanometer right now it is not just a glitch in some software for CPU-Z or anything like that it is actually a 12 nanometer part and at least right now it's $85 which is just absolutely an incredible value. The link to that processor that's the 12 nanometer SKU will be in the description down below. But I do wanna hear your guys' thoughts on this. Is this now the just go-to low budget part for a PC build? Or is there something else out there that I'm just completely oblivious to or just not mentioning right now that you think I should be mentioning? Let me know all your thoughts on this new 1600 in the comments down below. And of course, if you like the video and you wanna see more like it, give this video a like, share, subscribe, and comment, all those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos over here from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.